One Zambia, one nation. Welcome to the News News. I'm Alice Banda on the news desk. Let's take a look at the stories making headline. African countries age to consider inclusive education. Women led cooperatives empowered in Central Province. Government assures of availability of affordable maize. In sports news, Zambia means gold medal at the Judo Championship in Budapest. And now the news in detail. Minister of Technology and Science Felix Mutati has called on the African continent to consider inclusive education and skills development for learners. And Education Minister Douglas Siakalima says the government is on course with its education system. Kalan Muchima has more in this report. Sustainable development goal number four speaks to ensuring lifelong learning opportunities for all, from early childhood to adult education, ensuring equity, inclusion and gender equality, ensuring effective learning and the acquisition of relevant knowledge, skills and competences. This was also the theme for the 2024 African Union Heads of States and Government Summit in Ethiopia, the African Union is trying to push African governments towards accelerating efforts towards the attainment of SDG number 4 by 2030 after realizing that most countries in the region may not attain this goal. The Zambian government, through Technology and Science Minister Felix Mtati, says President Harand Hichnama's leadership has attached a lot of political will in the attainment of education and skills development. You need strong and sustainable political commitment in the context of Zambia, we have demonstrated this commitment by the deployment of resources for skills and education. For example, 20% of our CDF has been dedicated to deal with access issues for our people. And since we took that decision, we have seen that the numbers have quadrupled. Education Minister Douglas Yakalima says Zambia is progressing well more than other African countries in the attainment of SDG number four. Education and skills make a country because we don't need to go and get artisans from Zimbabwe because many of the, our artisans are coming from Zimbabwe. But now this is a deliberate way of a new government that children who have two pathways, career or skills, Courtesy of what we have learned also here, uh, we could be above many of our, uh, many of our uh, neighbors. Many people used to say that, so where are you going to get money to invest uh, in, into free education? Then he said, so where, how do you want uh, the children to, to, to be? The two ministers were speaking in an interview with Zanis on the sidelines of the summit, which has since come to a close, Kalan Muchima, Reporting for the news in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. And in Northwestern Province, teachers' unions in Chavuma District of Northwestern Province have held the government for the recent recruitment of over 7,000 teachers. Speaking during a teacher orientation meeting for the new teachers, union leaders are confident that the recruitment will help in meeting the government's objectives of providing equal education to all Zambians. Here is a report. In a bid to provide effective quality education and reduce poverty levels, government has recruited 7,221 teachers under the 2023 recruitment exercise. This has excited Basic Education Teachers Union of Zambia in Chavuma District who feel the new teachers will help government attain its goal. Uh, we are indeed grateful to the government, in particular His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Zambia, Akainde Ichilema, for this massive recruitment that he has done. We've never seen this in the history of Zambia. Uh, we are so happy because this shall go a long way to push on the deficit that we had uh, in these schools. Actually, more especially in rural areas, uh, it is actually a good thing that this problem of teacher pupil ratio, I'm sure that problem will never be there. It is done. 
and the National Union of Public-Private Educators of Zambia says the union values government partnership in delivering quality education and bettering working conditions. So in this vein, we are happy. These teachers are receiving their appointment letters today, ready to go in the field and perhaps reduce the teacher preparation. In the same vein, as a district, as a union leader who wants to urge government to look into the issue of upgrade, most of the teachers that are here have attained higher qualifications, but they have still remained static in their previous salary skills. So we'd be very happy if these teachers are put in the right skills. Speaking at the same event, the Zambian National Union of Teachers says the recruitment is a remarkable one and will boost the teaching fraternity in the district and country at large. But first and foremost, I would like to thank and appreciate the head of state himself, Mr. Tanya Chema, for massive recruitment in the Republic of Zambia. It is cardinal in the sense that most schools in rural areas they don't have uh, uh, qualified teachers. So by sending uh, teachers there, it is going to alleviate uh, challenges that uh, the community have. Josephine Bande reporting for Zanis, Chavuma District in Northwestern Province. The Electoral Commission of Zambia, ECZ, Commissioner McDonald Chipenzi, has thanked all the stakeholders for their contributions towards the just-ended Kiowad by-elections in Mwansabombwe district of Luapula province. Mr. Chipenzi was speaking during a comprehensive review of the recently held local government by-elections won by the UPND. He said the election was credible and that no reports of violence were recorded, an indication that all stakeholders played their part. The commissioner further urged the people of Mwansabombe district to get acquainted and understand the electoral process reforms as they continue to work for the people of Zambia. He said ECZ is committed to transparency and accountability and that soon will embark on the review process to assess the efficacy and integrity of the electoral process. Mr. Chipenzi said the ECZ acknowledges the commendable voter turnout witnessed during the local government elections, reflecting the citizens' active engagement in the democratic process. 9% of these elections have been held properly and successfully. Training officer, you did your job. Assistant to training officers, PLP, presiding officer, you did your job. I leave you this, this, this words of encouragement. Continue. Accusations will come. Accusations will come. Anyone who goes out in the bush to hunt, if you listen to the, to the sounds of crows, birds, and whatever, you will not even accomplish your job. You will run out. You will run out. Those are normal things in the, in the jungle. Election is a jungle. We so many sounds here and there. Focus on your, on your work. The media colleagues understand that I'm also a journalist. You've done a good job. I was just uh, watching the clip that you said, Mr. Brilliant package. It was well done. And congratulations. Gift Banji reports that Singani Ward Councillor Flannery Masika has been elected as deputy mayor for Choma Council. This follows the expiry of tenure of office for the immediate past deputy mayor, Councillor Brighton Monsaka of Mbabala Ward, who had served for two and a half years from August 2021. Councillor Masika was declared duly elected by the returning officer, who is also Choma Municipal Council town clerk. Davis Musenge after he poured 19 votes against Momba Ward Councillor Albert Mangala who got 11 votes. A total of 31 votes were cast and one vote was rejected. Choma Municipal Council has elected Franley Masika with 19 votes as its deputy mayor after beating his opponent Albert Mangala who got 11 votes from 30 valid votes while one ballot was rejected from 31 dot of vote Casted. Choma Municipal Council Town Clerk Davis Musenge declared Councillor Masika as duly elected around 11 hours. 
Councillor Albert Mangala of Mumba Ward receives 11. Councillor Flannery Masika of Singani Ward receives 19. I, therefore, as returning officer for this election, do declare the said Flannery Masika having been today, the 19th of February 2024, elected Deputy Mayor for Choma Manuspa Council. According to Section 11, Sub 1 of the Law Government Act No. 2 of 2019, the Deputy Mayor shall hold office for a term of two and a half years and may be re-elected for a further term of two and a half years. Councillors that are casting their votes, today we are casting for and on behalf of the people that elected them to this particular chamber. So we look forward to a cordial working relationship. Deputy Mayor-elect Flannery Basika pledged to work with all the councillors. While the outgoing deputy mayor thanked the councillors for cooperation during his tenure of office. Your worship, I, I received this office. Um, I'm, I'm happy. And that uh, I want my friend uh, who we are competing with not to feel as if this was a competition. We are one people. We are together. This is how it's supposed to be. I would like to express my happiness and gratitude for the support you exhibited during my tenure of office. Yiftibanji, Zanis, Nchoma, Southern Province. We take our first break. More stories still to come. Stay tuned. Kolera wapa msongo muka. Kolera wapa msongo wako ichisa. Mutuwa ina msongo wa kolera, echiku ichisa nga chikuma na kusaza nawa. Vize wipi mwaichisa mutu, Nabi poya mea mea, nge msoji waloso. Mubeji echikuzea nga chikuma mujimba, mumu ya kufumisa mea a mujimba. Mubeji nawa na hase kufa mjiwola li kumina jivali 12 hours, nge kawe chikumuhana bitumbo ya kumuka wa shiko. Unahase nga chili kuwachi wa kumusongu wa kolera, kuhichi la mkuna mea kuwa na kuhaka bitumbo, na waze alina majilo. Kuhulia ywa kuhulia na mawoko aze alina majilo, chipwe kuzachisa malonga na jindeho, Nijia kukosa na mea ya majilo hakuwa na kuhaka bitumbo. Kuhulia ya kuhulia ya kuhuwa na kufika wize wana wili kubajiji. Kuhulia ya kuhulia wituta wize kawatumbika angakana wako. Kuhulia ya kuhulia wize wana kulandulula mumikuwa kwa. Na kuhulia na wami hako na makovu hako na kukosa kanawa. Tunahase nga chiri kulikinga kumusongwa kolera. Jeleke numea enu akunwa chipwe kuhaka mwobitumbo vya klorene. Sande nukuma woko enu na sopo, chipwena mea kuhaka vitumbo hanyima ya kuzaisa chimbusho. Zumi senu vya kulia venu, shimbu kanda mubilie. Fuike nuha vya kulia venu vyo sena, kuchina kubiwila kubajiji. Kanda kulia vya kulia vya kulanda mumi kwa kanduma. Zachi senu chimbusho, lua lua sena. Kahaka nda kuzachi sandundu, chipwe mapepa andundu hakuya na kulihewa nduma. Mwatela kumwana ngwenu, vipi yo sena, muna witapu ila mchimbusho. Chimbushu cha nawa cha tela kupo cha unyoji kahanawa cha kufika lua losena. Mujimbu unwa wana mnehe lawa kuliwa kacha na cha tala kulikangula cha menu ya watu cha Ministry of Health. Welcome back and we continue with the news. The Gender Division Department through the Women Empowerment Program has empowered three women-led cooperatives in Kapirimponshi with equipment and a poultry package as startup for various income generating activities. The equipment and the pottery package is aimed at uplifting the welfare of women to be economically independent. Carlos Wonder now reports. Over dependence of women on their male counterparts, especially in rural areas, has continued to perpetuate their vulnerability to gender-based violence and socio-economic challenges. To uplift the welfare of women, the Gender Division Department has empowered three women cooperatives in Kaprimposhi District with peanut butter processing equipment and sewing machines and a comprehensive pottery package to initiate income generating activities. We want to ensure that women are empowered so that they are not dependent in these homes and they should be able to actually sustain themselves and their families. And also when a woman is empowered, it also helps with the, the reduction of GBV cases because it is that dependency that also leads to uh, gender-based violence in these homes. The government wants this empowerment to be applied as intended. I would not appreciate to hear a situation no, we put the machine, machines in that heart, which is not properly secured. 
tomorrow you bring a report to say it is stolen. No, the chicks where we put them into was leaking. And we get reports that all of them died. Beneficiary cooperatives have commended government for interventions to ensure women are not left behind in the country's development agenda. As many of us have lower levels of education in rural areas that you can be looking for employment. But with such empowerment, I think the government has created jobs for us. Carlos Mondazanis, Kaprim Poshi. Now, government has spent over 7 million kwacha to construct six maternity annexes using the Constituency Development Fund in Mapatizia constituency of Zimba District in Southern Province. Zimba Town Council Secretary Christopher Siasinyanga explained that out of the six, three have been completed, while the other three are still under construction. More in this report. The Presidential Directive to Construct Maternity Annexes at Health Facilities is yielding positive results in Zimba District. The construction of this maternity annex at Iluyaba in Spatunyana's chiefdom adds to the six maternity annexes that have been constructed under the 2022-2023 Constituency Development Fund. Uh, the construction of maternity uh, annex. We have done three in the 20. Uh, uh, 22 uh, uh, funding, as well as we are doing about three as well uh, in the 2023, or which we did in the 2023, we have done three of them. So in total, they are about six, at a cost of about uh, seven million. We used to see development in other big towns, you know, in Osaka, and you think, ah, but when are they going to remember us? But this time, government has remembered everyone equitably. And Mapatizia is one of those constituencies which are really grateful and benefiting. The construction of Ruyaba Maternity Annex being constructed by Protecno Engineering is advancing well. Within a period of uh, three weeks and some days, we've been able to reach the ring beam. Then uh, we'll finish it uh, probably by the end of month and we should be, we should be done with it. The period is uh, three months. Chief Spatunyana, through his representative, have expressed happiness with a number of CDF financed projects in his chiefdom. We have a lot of projects in the district, especially in the chiefdom. The schools, the clinics, in other areas, like when you talk of Siamono, there is even power there. For the first time, children are able to start because of CDF. Surely, the construction of six maternity annexes in Mampatiza constituents will reduce on distances covered by women to access maternity health care. Costa Kimdenda, Zanis, in Zimba District, Southern Province. A 33-year-old woman of Lusaka living with disability has employed both women and girls living with disability to take advantage of empowerment programs given by the government. Lundu Mwanakasale, a mother of one, said she has, been, she has benefited from Citizens' Economic Empowerment Commission, empowerment fund that has boosted her baking business. Speaking with Zanis in an interview ahead of the International Women's Day celebration, which falls on 8th March every year, Ms. Mwanakasale said women and girls who have failed to complete their tertiary education should identify some business skills and access the empowerment funds. Ms. Mwanakasale added that with her baking business, she's able to generate a monthly income of over 5,000 kwacha. She said the government should continue addressing challenges faced by people living with disability through various empowerment programs. Ms. Mwanakasale, who is a primary school teacher by profession and currently pursuing her Bachelor's of Arts in Education, noted that disability is not inability and further aged women living with disabilities to set their goals. The women can go back to school or they can go and upgrade and the girls living with disabilities be encouraged to go to school and uh, those that are able to do business get some empowerment, uh, do better in what they are able to do. We take another break and 
Join us for more stories when we return. Ushe cholera chinshi. Cholera guulwele bwa kupolomia. Omuntu kwete cholera ala polomia sana eyo no kuluka. Obusali buba ubwa menshi no kubuturuka ngomo basukira omukunga. Umuwele wa cholera takwata menshi mu mubiri pamulandu wa kuluka eyo no kupolomia. Umuwele wa cholera kuti afwa munsa ikumilimo na shibili na nguntile 12 hours nga taperu omuti uafika po. Ushua muntu kuti akwata shani cholera. Ukunuwa menshi ayabulo kuwamia na nguwa ya fiko. Ukulia ifia kulia ne minu ya alamba na ngumufipe ifia abulo kusamfia na menshi ya suma. Ukulia ifia kulia ifia basunga ukua abulo kufimba po, ifia kutira na balu nshi bale ikala po. Ukulia ifia kulia ifia shele po, ifia talala ifia kutira tabafisu ngile buinu na kalia iyo. Ukulia ifia kulia ifia bashitisha mumisebo. Ukulia ifisabo edo no msalo ifia abulo kusamfia. Kutituwa ichingri la shani kuhuluwele wa cholera. Wamienia menshi ya kunua ukupitila mkuipika na ngu kubika mkloruin. Sambeni kuminuwa na sopo ilo na menshi ya suma panu maya kubonfie chimbusu. Kafia niko ifia kulia ilo tamulalia. Fimbeni pafia kulia fionse pa kutibalu nshi tabale ikalapo. Mwilalia ifia kulia fisangwa mumisebo. Bonfie ni chimbusu inshitayonse. Mwila bonfia ifiku mkubiti na ngu ifupepa la pakuposa ubusali. Shiningisha ino kutila ubusali bonse buwa poswa mchimbusu. Sungeni chimbusu ichabusaka no kufimba po inshitayonse. Iimbila haba amirete la kochipa ni chimona pabumi. The news continues. Mombwa Central Member of Parliament, Credo Nanjua, has emphasized the government's commitment of ensuring the availability of affordable maize. Mr. Nanjua, who is also Southern Province Minister, says this can be seen by the supply of maize by the Food Reserve Agency at 330 kwacha per 50 kg bag. Kruger Siankulu filed in this report. Mumba Central Member of Parliament, Credo Nanjua, has conducted an on-spot check on selected crop fields affected by the dry spell in Mumbwa district. After interacting with affected farmers, Mr. Nanjua has called on private agricultural input suppliers who supplied inputs on credit to be lenient to the farmers as they may not be able to pay for the inputs. Many of our farmers here in Mumbwa, they have been getting loans, procuring loans from private uh, lenders. That's another situation because this is a natural disaster. The repayment of those loans was all dependent on the youth. And now that we have got this situation, still as government we need to come in and see how we can help our farmers that they don't lose the only asset that they have to these uh, lenders. Even lenders, they need to, to to have a human face on how to handle such a situation. Mumbwa District Agricultural Coordinator Jeshom Sikazwe gives an expert observation on the rate of crop survival. Our rate of survival, honorable, can be somewhere uh, uh, 60, 70 percent. If, uh, if the rains can come within a week. Just within a week. Within two weeks it will be worse. Yeah. Meanwhile, farmers have different suggestions for survival amidst the dry spell. When we look at our, our crops here, it's really damaged and there's no hope. There's no hope. And we are appealing to the government to intervene this, either maybe even to come up with a food for work. If we were helped by the government or CDF in our constituencies to have uh, irrigation systems, maybe you can uh, manage to water even one hectare. You can, hundred by hundred, you can try and water it yourself. Krugas Yankur, Zanis, Mumbwa. Still in the news, the continuous dry spell in Gwembe district of southern province has raised anxiety among the people who fear a possible food shortage. Chief Chipepo's representative, 
Winard Jumbambula, says the district is likely to have a poor crop yield again following the continued dry spell. The traditional leader has since appealed to the government to consider the district to access maize from the Food Reserve Agency for community sale. Bran Kapuka has more in this report. The continuous dry spell in Gwembe district is raising anxiety among the people, including traditional leaders. The Pepo Chiefdom is one of the most hit areas in the valley, and the chief representative, Wina Jumba, is worried that the district will have a poor yield again. The geographical position of Gwembe district has made it vulnerable to prolonged dry spells. During the last farming season, Gwembe district experienced flash floods followed by a dry spell which affected the crop yield. He has appealed to government to consider revising the procedure to access maize from the Food Reserve Agency community sale. <laughs> Like other farmers concerned, Melichimbali has lost hope of a good harvest this year as her field has dried up. She now looks up to government for the gift food as she has suffered crop failure for two consecutive years. Brand Kapuka reporting in Gwembe District, Southern Province. And the Zambia Meteorological Department, ZMD, says Southern, Lusaka, Western, and parts of Eastern provinces will continue experiencing dry spells until February month end. Laxon Makoza reports that ZMD Director Edson Nkonde says the affected areas are likely to receive rains but won't be sufficient to improve the soil moisture. Department ZMD says southern Lusaka, western and parts of eastern provinces will continue to experience rainfall deficit till the end of February this month. Making a weather forecast presentation during the ZANIS Zambia Today weekly program in Lusaka, ZMD Director Edson Nkonde indicated that the dry spell will continue. Mr. Nkonde added that there is a likelihood of rainfall activities but not sufficient to wipe out the rainfall deficit experienced in the affected areas. Southern province, Osaka province, parts of western province and central province will still continue having deficits. There may be some rains improvement in terms as, as we go towards the end of the season into March, but we are anticipating that that will not be significant to wipe off the deficits that we have incurred so far. Meanwhile, northern, Luapula and Mchinga provinces are expected to continue recording significant rainfall in the month of February. Continue having above average or surplus rainfall over Luapula, northern and parts of Mchinga, the northern parts of, of, of those uh, provinces. So this is the picture that we are carrying up to the end of February. There is some slight chance that we may have improvements as we go towards the end, but even that improvement may not be significant to wipe out the deficits that we have. Mr. Nkonde attributed the prolonged dry spell to the El Nino weather pattern that has characterized the 2023-2024 rainfall season. For Zanis, I'm Lakson Makodza. In Western Province, a cross-section of the community in Kaoma has commended government and its cooperating partners for transforming livelihoods through the Scaling Up Nutrition SAN program that has contributed to reducing stunting 
and underweight in children under the age of two years. The multi-sectoral program has been rolled out in all the 16 wards of Kaoma district. More in this report. The government, in coordination with the United Nations Children's Emergency Fund, UNICEF, and other donors came up with a multi-sectoral program called the 1,000 Most Critical Days in order to address child malnutrition in Zambia. The program is focusing on nutrition-specific and sensitive interventions in interested groups such as adolescent girls, pregnant women, breastfeeding mothers, women in reproductive age, and children under the age of two. The project aims at reducing stunting in children under the age of two and improve general nutrition at household level. Recently, implementing ministries, district heads of government departments embarked on a monitoring tour in selected wards to appreciate what is obtained on the ground. As stakeholders together, we are doing integrated activities and we are also synergy as a district when we are going to implement this same kind of activity. So we are saying we are ready and the HODs at least they've seen some of the interventions that are being implemented by the sectors. And beneficiaries in different sectors share inspiring testimonies to the transformative success stories that the Scaling Up Nutrition program brings. <laughs> Currently, stunting and underweight in Kaoma stands at 34.1 and 9.7% respectively. Government, through the National Food and Nutrition Commission, is committed to ensuring that there is a reduction in malnutrition preference rate among its people. It is hoped that with the coming in of scaling up nutrition, figures will reduce. Mutita Mubagwe reporting for Zanis in Kaoma District, Western Province. We move to Eastern Province where Lions Club of Lusaka and Chipata have embarked on a tree planting program in Chipata District of Eastern Province as a way of contributing to the fight against climate change. Speaking at a tree planting exercise held at Chipata District Hospital, Lions Global Membership Team Coordinator Rex Chisolo said the devastating effects of climate change can only be reversed by concerted efforts in the promotion of afforestation, among other interventions. Here is a report. Deforestation is one of the human activities that has landed humanity in trouble with the environment. The current dry spells being experienced as a result of climate change are just some of the effects of deforestation. In joining in the fight against climate change, the Chipata Lions Club is planting trees in selected parts of Chipata including Chipata District Hospital, Maguero, and Cheshire Homes. We are losing a lot of um, trees because of charcoal burning, and then carbon emissions are being increased. So as a service organization, we have thought that we should contribute to the reduction of carbon emissions, not only worldwide, but also particularly here in Zambia. We have chosen Chipata District uh, Hospital because it is a place that everyone is going to come to. It is a place that is going to make people realize how important it is to have trees. The club has a series of tree planting programs in the district. We have about uh, 45 plants that should be planted here. Uh, it's a variety of these plants that we have here. This is the Lounge Club Chipata. We have a series of projects we identify projects uh, during our meetings where there is need. Uh, this is the Chipata District Hospital. is one of those like uh, Maguero, uh, Cheshire Homes. Uh, this is where we have already participated. Fitting from this program, Chipata District Hospital representative Patricia Nsonga expressed gratitude to the Chipata Lions Club for the guest charm. We are very, very happy. 
that you've chosen Chipata district to do the, um, the tree planting. As you can see, uh, this is a new surrounding, I think only a few years old. You've seen there are no many trees. So we are happy that these trees we are going to plant for sure will look after them properly. Two, three years from now, we'll be eating mangoes, not buying mangoes. Thank you so much. Pato Dimbani, Zanis News, Chipata District, Eastern Province. The Veterinary Association of Zambia, VAS, says there is a booming underground market for dog meat being sold as goat meat in some public drinking places and on the open market. VAS President Malcolm Chioba says there is need for deterrent measures to stop the illegal practice before the trend becomes widespread. Speaking during the VAS and Animal Warfare Society's joint press briefing in Lusaka today, Dr. Chioba explained that consumption of dog meat exposes humans to diseases such as rabies. He added that dogs are a host of a number of serious zoonotic parasite, parasites such as tapeworms, roundworms, and hookworms, which are transmittable to humans. Dr. Chioba observed that to effectively combat the illicit trade, there is need to revisit and revise outdated legislation such as the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act of 1960. And Animal Warfare Society Vice Chairperson Sheila Oparacha ex uh, disclosed that the society has evidence that in July 2022, a truck carrying 69 dogs was stopped at a police checkpoint in Mkushi en route to Kasumbalesa. We need to be cognizant, cognizant as a country that we might be having a thriving underground market for dog meat, especially being sold as goat meat, to, un to unsuspecting customers at public drinking places, and, and the further possibility of such meat being sold on open markets as well. In the absence of deterrent measures, this practice, despite being illegal, may actually become widespread. And its offenders go unpunished. I think we also heard from the area statement about the zoonotic potential, meaning diseases that are transmitted from animals to humans that exist in consumption of dog meat. And some of the diseases, as mentioned earlier, include rabies. I would like to emphasize this point that when someone gets infected with rabies and they show signs of illness, at that stage, it's irreversibly going to be a case of the death of that person. It's a highly fatal disease. And imagine in this kind of trade where there is no point at which experts look at meat, even if it was legal to consume that animal. There is no point at which experts will do an antimortem examination, like I said. So it means the risk is very high of getting such diseases. Not only rabies is transmitted from you know, uh, uh, dogs. There are other zoonotic diseases such as Trichinella, Cryptosporidium, roundworms, hookworms, tapeworms, and other skin parasites such as mange. To show us that this meat trade is taking place, this is evidence that has been collected by the animal welfare organizations. We'll start way back in July 2022 when a truck carrying 29 dogs was intercepted at the police checkpoint in Mukushi, en route to uh, Kasumbolesa, where sadly only 19 dogs survived. Two individuals were convicted of illegal animal movement and cruelty, with allegations that the dogs were purchased from villages in Luapula province. November 2022, another incident involving a truck transporting 21 mostly purebred dogs intercepted at Kasumbolesa border Suspect was uh, suspected of selling the dogs for security companies. The dogs were confiscated from the alleged owner and rehomed at the Kitwa Animal Welfare Society. 
And in sports news, Zambia judo athlete Simon Zulu has won a gold medal at the Hungarian International Judo Championship in Budapest. Zulu defeated James Zara of Malta to secure Zambia's top spot on the podium on Friday, 17, 2024. The competition hosted 13 countries, including Zambia, Malta, Romania, Madagascar, Burkina Faso, Ukraine, Korea, Lebanon, Chile, and Australia, Guinea, Cuba, and host Hungary. Host Hungary. Zulu is based in Hungary, training at the IJF Training Center in Budapest as he prepares for the Paris 2024. Olympic Games slated for August and National Sports Council of Zambia Secretary General Rafael Mulenga has applauded Simon Zulu's exceptional achievement and wishes him continued success as he prepares to represent Zambia at the Olympics. As we end the news, a recap of stories that made headlines. African countries age to consider inclusive education. Women-led cooperatives empowered in Central Province. Government assures of availability of affordable maize. In sports news, Zambia means gold medal at the Judo Championship in Budapest. On that note, we end Zanis News. On behalf of the entire Zanis production team, I'm Alice Banda saying goodbye and God bless you.